everybody, it's me again, Kaiser Moses the First, living Pharaoh, that which you shall be. Here with another installment of member of the Black Peace Stone Nation speaks out. Today I want to give you a little history lesson of how uh, the stones used to be back in the day when I came into the nation and how things was when uh, I became a part of this demonstration. And uh, first I want to start off by giving you a little history of the type of neighborhood I came from in Inglewood and the type of family structures that was set up in Inglewood. Now, I grew up on 73rd and Racine in Inglewood. It was a kind of hectic neighborhood. A lot of GDs, gangster disciples, whatever you want to call them, everywhere. You know, trying to, you know, lay their lick down on you. You know, they robbing you. They stealing. They walking around like savages with no shirts on. You know, they, they raping. You know, all type of chaos. All type of chaos and confusion. You're lucky to make it to the currency exchange that was up there to cash your check. You understand me? And uh, I grew up in the midst of this. Me and a lot of my homies, a lot of my stone brothers. We grew up in the midst of this nonsense. And we seen the way those GDs carried themselves. And we seen that they were savages. And we didn't want to be a part of nothing like that. Not at all. We was looking for something better. And it was a handful of brothers that was on the corner of 73rd and May. Or should I say 73rd and Racine. The corner by 72nd Street. Right by the hair rolls and up in that area. And these brothers carried themselves high. They walked with their heads up high. And the GDs didn't fuck with them. They were scared of them. I mean, sometimes they clashed and got into it, but it was nipped in the bud real quick. Somebody got stabbed, shot, fucked up, or whatever. But whatever, they earned their respect. And I liked those handful of brothers. I admired the fact that it wasn't that many of them, and they stood up to the many of the GDs that was around there. And uh, eventually I became a part of that. You know, I wanted to see what that was all about. I come from a family where my father was an immigrant from Africa. He didn't know nothing about America. He came to this country just for success. And through the attainment of that success that he wanted so badly, he neglected his own children. And I had other uh, friends that were in uh, a, a similar situation to that where they was neglected by their parents as well. So it was nobody around to pay us attention or had time to teach us nothing. So here we were, young souls, just out here on the streets, lost, don't know what to do. And the, the greatest thing that we wanted was to learn how to be a man, you understand me? And there was nobody around to teach us how to be a man. All we saw was wine heads on the corner and these savage GDs. But it was those handful of brothers that was different from everybody. They walked with their head up high, and they carried themselves in a manner where you knew to respect them. And we admired that. So we decided to become a part of that. And then we were introduced to the Chief Malik and the lessons of the Chief Malik. And those demonstrations was powerful. Blackstone, stone thing, powerful demonstration. Blackstone taught us that we was something that we was great and that we could learn how to be men and be productive members of society, you understand me? And so we decided to join that demonstration. And in the process of us joining that demonstration, we faced violent opposition because those GDs in that neighborhood at that time said that that neighborhood was their neighborhood, but we wasn't gonna let them have it. It wasn't gonna be their neighborhood, it was gonna be ours. And so through the process of us becoming stones, we had a lot of fights to fight. We got shot at every day. I remember coming out of my house at 10 o'clock in the morning, somebody out there waiting to shoot at me. I could barely get out the damn door, you understand me? I remember telling my friends, hey man, you know, walk with me to the store. My mama wants some bread, but I couldn't go to the store by myself because them GDs was patrolling our hood, jumping out of cars on us, chasing us down with sticks and bats, guns, and knives, everything, you understand me? It was hectic times, but we survived because we stuck together. We banded together. We had our meetings regularly every week. We paid dues. We took care of one another. If our mothers and fathers couldn't afford to get us shoes, we took the due money and bought us shoes. Of course, with the agreement of every member, we asked everybody at the meetings could we do these things, and we did them. 
You understand? We took care of each other. I remember times, it would be like eight, nine of us, we'd all jump on the CTA bus and all go to the movie theater and watch a movie with the due money. We stuck together, man. It took finance to build a nation, and we used that finance to build our nation and promote unity with each other. It was love. We even had sisters, too, you know? But if a sister got to acting in whorish ways, we quickly dispersed her out of the nation and had her go about a separate way because a stone sister is not a hoe. A stone sister was loyal to her man and don't play games. A real stone sister, you can't even look at with folly. She'll check you instantly and put you in your damn place. And her, her vagina is for the man that is there for her and dedicated to her. And she'd be a damn fool to give it to somebody else that wasn't. And this is the way we demonstrated. We had respect for one another. We took care of one another. We ate assisted one another. When a brother or sister was in adversity, we assisted them. And no outsider could ever come in and get over on our brother or sister, whether it be a whore, a, 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 white, a white person, you know, a police officer, a, a teacher, whatever. Whoever was an outsider was an outsider, and there was no way you could get over on one of our brothers. We weren't going to let it happen. No brother was going to stand there, sit back, and watch somebody fuck over one of ours and get away with it. No way. We had too much unity for that. And that's what Black Stone is all about. And that's what Stone Love is all about. We live in a world where it's chaotic and hell. You can barely trust a soul. So that's why we form organizations like the Black Peace Stone Nation, so that we can have people to trust, so that we can have a brotherhood, so that we know somebody is watching our back. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. And you should be too if you're about Black Stone, because that's what we do. We watch each other's backs. That's what we do. I remember a time where I was driving, you know, I was like maybe 12 or 13. Back in the day in Chicago, you could drive at 12 or 13 because they had a system set up where if you got caught driving without license, you just told the police any name you wanted to. They wrote you a ticket in that name without looking at your ID and expected you to show up to court. So we could just give out any name and keep driving and then show the ticket when we get pulled over if it's before the court date. And that's our driver's license. And that's how we would get away with driving at such early age back in the day in Chicago. But of course, they changed the system now and you can't do that anymore. Anyway, back to my story. I remember one time I'm driving in my car. You know, I might be 12 or 13 or something. I run into the back of these GDs by accident because the weather was real bad. It was snowing. It was rain and sleet. And uh, the... The guys in front of me pushed on brakes too quick. I, I think I was on Halsted, like, uh, like uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 60 seconds or something. So I'm, I'm trying to push on brakes because they pushed on brakes so quick. I run smack into the back of them. Bam! So as I'm running to the back of them, I notice that, damn, these are GDs. Oh, shit. They're going to kill me. So the only thing I could do was take off on them. So I took off on them. They chasing me down, hosted and everything. They finally catch me up at a light on like maybe 57 and hosted or something. So I'm stuck at the light and I can't go nowhere. So they jump out the car on me. They get to hitting me all in my face, telling me to get them the keys. I, you ain't getting shit. I'm 13 years old. I ain't giving you shit. These grown men, 25 to 27, they punching on me, still on me. I'm fighting back. I ain't letting them get my keys. One of them reach over in the car while I'm fighting another one and pop my hood. He start tearing my spark plugs out and shit. Whole messed up situation. So anyway, I'm fighting these like three GD dudes in their 20s and I'm like 13. You see what I'm saying? I'm fighting these dudes. They trying to take my keys. I ain't letting them get the keys. So I get out the car. I open up the door, hit dude with the door, get out the car. They chasing me down, hosted. But I'm steady swinging, fighting, fight a little run, fight a little run. The police end up coming. We all get locked up. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I ain't no snitch or nothing like that, so I don't even want to press charges on these cats. You know what I'm saying? We'll handle this shit on the streets because this is the way it go, and that's the life I was living at the time at 13. So fuck it. You understand me? So the police officer pulled me in the station. This is 61st and Racine, the old police station in Inglewood that was on 61st and Racine. They pulled me in the station, and they uh, uh, one officer tell the other one, oh, go ahead and uh, leave out. I'll handle this. So I stay in the, in, in the uh, office with the one officer, and he say, hey, man, you Blackstone, ain't you? I, I see it. I, 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 I can tell. And I was like, yeah, I'm Blackstone. He like, I'm Blackstone, too. He like, don't worry. I'm going to get you your car back and everything. He like, man, you want to press charges on these guys? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to press charges. He like, all right, cool. Then we'll let them go on about their business. 
you know, I'll write you up a little ticket, but I'll get you your car back and everything, and you'll be straight. And he was like, man, it's nothing but stone love. The police officer guy told me he was from Foster Park. I'm like, man, stone love. He gave me my car back and everything. This the type of stones we had back in the day when I was coming up in this thing in the early 80s and the early 90s. You understand me? This the type of unity we had. Now, that police officer didn't even know me, but the fact that he knew I was a stone, he straightened everything out for me and even got my car back knowing that I'm driving bogus without a license and all of that. You understand me? This is the type of stones that we need back into this world. You understand me? Because that's stone love and that's what black stone is all about. And this is what we need. Stone love. You understand me? And this is just an example of me letting you know how we used to be and how we need to be again, if not better than this. You understand me? Now, I got a few uh, topics that I want to address to the nation, you understand me? And uh, this is uh, some serious stuff that I want to lay down on, on you, you know? So, get ready, you know, if you got to watch this video two or three times, do what you got to do. But, uh, for the record, get a drawing out of this. And I hope it give you a, some inspiration to be a better stone than what you are now, you understand me? Now, back in the day, I remember... It was uh, certain older stone brothers that I would go over their house and they were masters. We had karate masters. We had all type of brothers. Brothers all had their special thing that they was a master of that they could help you with. It was a community all over the city of Chicago. If you needed to see a doctor, we had a doctor for you. If you need to see a psychiatrist, we had a psychiatrist for you, a counselor, a counselor for you, and on and on and on, etc. You understand me? And this is the way we have to have it again because this is the only right way to be. We messed up by letting what these other organizations do conflict with what we're trying to do. You understand me? We don't need to focus on what they're doing. We need to focus on what we need to do. You understand me? And the main thing Stones had more than anything was discipline. You understand me? You could bring the, the, the most stupidest hoe around us, you know what I'm saying, that want to fucking suck everybody, and it'll always be a brother to say, man, I'm not touching that nasty ass bitch. There's all type of females out here. I ain't got to touch nothing that everybody else touching. You understand me? This is the type of brothers we had. We had discipline. You understand me? We had brothers with intelligence, brothers that knew how to fix problems and, and solve situations, not idiots that come in and make problems and situations worse. You understand me? Now, a lot of brothers got a problem with this mama and daddy boy syndrome where they like this comfort of their mother and father, the one that's weak enough to keep giving to them, even though they keep slapping them in the face. What I want to let you know is that that's not the nature of a stone. We don't depend on our mother and father if we are grown adult. We go get out and make shit happen, whether we got to get a job, hustle, or whatever. We're going to be industrious and make it happen. We're not going to depend on our mothers and fathers for the rest of our life till they die. And then when they die, we don't know what the fuck we going to do. You understand me? That's weak shit. That ain't no stone. A stone is solid and firm. We ain't about weak shit. We make shit happen. Okay, we innovators. We go out and get something. We don't hide in comfort zones. We go build something new. We are builders, not destroyers. We go build something instead of staying up, milking somebody and depending on them forever until they die and then we stuck looking stupid. You understand me? It ain't what we do. It ain't our nature. And so I'm telling you, brothers, to develop the mind and the concept to not be something that weak, to be stronger than that. Show your mother and father that you can help them. Go out and get something and help them pay the bills. You know, help them put food on the table. Help them take care of your little brother and your little sister. This is what a black stone does. A black stone is upright, independent, and fearless, who care for their loved ones and follow the chief Mali and the prophet Nubo Drew Ali to a destiny which is not uncertain nor unknown. You understand me? This is what we do. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, this hater stuff. You know, I'm going to keep talking about that because I see so many brothers and sisters on this hater shit. But if you're a hater, be strong enough to admit that you're a hater instead of being in denial about it. Admission is the first step to recovery from being a hater. You understand me? And I already elaborate on being a hater on so many other videos, I don't even have to keep touching the topic of something like that. So that'll just probably be the last time I really elaborate on it unless brothers ask me questions and want me to demonstrate about a little something more. Now, one thing about a stone is we, we are not arrogant, okay? And we are not big-headed. We don't think we're smart because we have the intelligence to understand that once you think you're smart, who else can teach you something? 
You understand me? The chief Malik taught us to be the message that we bring. And he taught us to demonstrate 360 degrees of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So if we're going to be the message that we bring, we have to be real. In other words, Chief Malik told you to be real when he told you to be the message that you bring. So be real. You see what I'm saying? Don't be a fake. Whatever you say, do it. Live up to your word. Even if you don't want to, you shouldn't have said it. So since you said it, live up to it. You understand me? That's what you need to do. You understand? And we ain't never smart because once you think you're smart, you're the biggest dummy in the world because can't nobody else teach you nothing because you think you're smart. So let's be humble, brothers and sisters, and let's be humble about everything that we do so that we can keep learning and keep growing and demonstrate the 360 degrees knowledge of wisdom and understanding. You understand me? Now, when it comes to bullshit, every brother and sister is supposed to be like the bull. Drop the shit and run. You understand me? So when it comes to bullshit, be like the bull. Drop it and run the fuck away from it because we ain't got time for bullshit. We on building things. We on making things better. You're building up communities, helping the people. You know what I'm saying? Teaching people how to be better than what they really are. When we see a problem, we correct them. That's what we do. We rangers, man. What do you think a ranger is? We policing shit. But we ain't policing shit for a paycheck. We policing shit because in our heart, we about the upliftment of fallen humanity. We are the leaders and teachers. So this is what we must be about. You understand me? Now, a goofy nigga will waste his time trying to figure everybody else out instead of himself. But if you go to the lessons and you demonstrate off your circle seven, and the prophet demonstrated in the circle seven that if you'd ask me what to study, I would reply yourself. And when you well have studied yourself and would ask me what to study next, he would reply yourself. So in other words, life is a constant lesson. Life is all about constantly studying yourself. And even when you think you well have studied yourself, you need to study yourself more. Forget looking at what everybody else doing and trying to study them. You ain't figured out your damn self. How the fuck you going to figure out somebody else? A, the stupidest person in the world think he could figure out somebody else, but he ain't figured his motherfucking self out. And the prophet and chief Malik taught us that you ain't never through figuring yourself out. That it's a lifelong process. You understand me? So let's keep this in mind, brothers and sisters, and let's stay focused on studying ourselves because that's what we live for. You understand me? Now, when it comes to stealing, I'm going to tell you, from my history of stealing, okay? Because I didn't been a thief before. I didn't stole shit. I'm not proud of it. You know, I feel bad about it. You know, no. But at the time, I felt that was right because I was ignorant. But one thing I learned about stealing, whenever you steal some shit, you'll never be able to keep it. Just as quick as you got it, that's just as fast as it's going to go. Don't, don't, don't ask me why, how or why, but that's just the way it's set up. That's the way this world is set up. You understand me? And, uh, so your best bet is to earn shit instead of stealing it because stealing ain't going to get you nowhere but getting hit upside the head and losing everything all over again. Bottom fucking line. You understand me? Take it from me, somebody that knows no better, somebody that done been through the shit. You understand me? Now, now, what I want each brother and sister to do is to ask themselves, are you a builder or are you a destroyer? Like the chief my league and the prophet of Madrid League tell us, you need to study yourself. You understand me? So study yourself by asking yourself, are you a builder or are you a destroyer? The people that you come in contact with, do you build things with them or do you tear things down with them? And which one do you think is healthy, a builder or a destroyer? I've told you many times before that being a builder is what's healthy, but you need to determine this on your own. You understand me? Is it cool to be a destroyer or is it cool to be a builder? And which one are you? This is what you need to focus on and recollect on. You understand me? Now, now, what I want, really want to focus on, too, is when, uh, when we study ourselves, one thing that we must always be clear on when studying ourselves, what part of us is our higher self and what part of us is our lower self? And are we thinking right now with our higher self or are we thinking right now with our lower self? This is something that we really need to really think on every day and catch ourselves when we were walking in the lower self and not carrying ourselves according to the higher self. You got to catch that and put yourself in check. Would you rather put yourself in check or have somebody like me put your ass in check or some other person that's ready to bust you upside your shit? You understand me? I think you'd rather like 
to put yourself in check than to have somebody else put you in check. Because there's all type of people out here that ain't got no problem with putting their hands on you if, if you'd have made them feel threatened. You understand me? So let's focus on putting ourselves in check instead of letting somebody else put us in check. You understand me? Now, another thing, never let a bitch get in your head because a bitch gonna always betray you and stab you in your back quicker than your brother or your sister will. You understand me? Let's always keep this in mind. You know, it's a lot of scandalous, dirty ass bitches out here. And that's another reason why we need need each other. Because you never know what somebody's doing behind your back. And your brother and sister going to come forward and let you know what's going on behind your back. You understand me? And that's even more of a, a blessing to you for having brothers and sisters like that. That care enough for you to let you know what somebody is doing behind your back who you think you can trust. You understand me? So let's keep that in mind also. You know, that that's another good reason. You understand me? Now, now, let me get back to the ranger topic because all of us are rangers. And let me give you a drawing of what being a ranger is to me and uh, how I feel about it. You understand me? Now, to me, a ranger is like a policeman. You know, a ranger uh, accepts the responsibility of being like the police because it's his duty and obligation to correct you and put you back on the righteous path. You understand me? So being a ranger is a, a, a great responsibility because you are a fundamental part of society. It's your duty and obligation to help people better themselves and correct themselves. We do this for the upliftment of fallen humanity. And that's what we do. We help people. You know, that's what Stones always did. We always help people. We helped our communities, all that. Somehow we, we started falling off and losing track of who we was and, and started being a little un unsuitable and unprofitable to society in our neighborhoods and communities but now we need to get back on that page and start being back a productive member of society and the community and put things back on the righteous path and help people be where they're supposed to be you understand me no when a ranger tells you he's with you rest assured that a ranger is going to have your back and be there for you regardless. And nothing will get in the way of him having your back and being there for you. And that's what a ranger does. A ranger's word is everything. When a ranger tell you that he there for you and if anything, anybody doing anything for you, he'll get him, he going to get him for you. Because that's what a ranger do. And his word is bond. He got your back regardless. You understand me? That's a real ranger. You understand me? And these are the people that are in this nation. You understand me? Now, let's see, what else do I have to talk about? Okay, all right, one, one last thing I want to address to you brothers and sisters. Okay, by us being in the Black Peace Stone Nation, we understand that uh, the human family is one system, and all of us are connected. You know, and I have evidence to prove to you that all of us are connected. Yeah, even the European, even the, the enemies, even if somebody that's against you is connected to you. And the evidence that we are all connected is, all you got to do is yarn. Whoever you yarn in front of, they're going to repeat the same act you just did. And that's proof right there that the human family is one system and that we are all connected. And by us being members of the Black Peace Stone Nation, it's our duty and the obligation to carry ourselves in that like manner. You understand me? And to keep this knowledge in our mind and carry ourselves as if, you know, we are all connected. We are for the betterment of the human family. You understand me? And this is the way we must carry ourselves and this is the way we must act. No savagery. No bullshit. I'm, I'm sure we can't change overnight because I didn't change overnight. It's a gradual process that we must keep up and stay focused on. So all I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, to do is to just stay on studying yourself, trying to better yourself, and trying to help the people that's around you and correct them, even if they aren't members of this nation. We still are the role models and the example for society, the community, and all governments of the world. You understand me? Because we are the keepers of the five highest principles known to man. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And this is a great responsibility. You understand me? So therefore, you must wholeheartedly accept it and keep up with it and believe in it and be the living example, the message that you bring to everybody, the world and all the masses. You understand me? So with that thought, I'm going to leave, leave this in the signs of love, true peace, freedom, and justice. And I hope you got something fruitful from this demonstration and knowledgeable. And I want you to step up and be who you are and carry yourselves accordingly. Learn to practice unity. 
You understand me? It takes finance to build a nation. So pay your dues. Do what you got to do to make sure everybody is straight with your dues. And always have your regular meetings. We got to do this. We got to do this just like how they do church on Sunday. If they can do it for a fake white God, then of course we can do it for each other. You understand me? Because we are the true organization. You understand me? Not nothing about falsehood and fakeness like a lot of these religions and other organizations is about. You understand me? So step up, be the message that you bring, follow your chief, and do what you got to do, and carry yourself accordingly, and get your hoods, communities, and neighborhoods in order, and be productive members to societies, and let them see that once that one organization that was start as rejected has now risen to be the headstone of the corner that everyone wants to mold, shape, and model themselves after. You understand me? I leave as I came, Cosimo's the first, living Pharaoh, that what you shall be.